Smorig have made a name for themselves with their affordable and comprehensive rigging products and over the past year or so they've been dipping their toe into releasing a few different LED lights and today we're looking at their biggest step into this market yet with the announcement of their 120D and 120B Cobb LED fixtures. But are they any good and how do they compare to the existing fixtures available on the market? Well, let's take a look. Smorig's existing product lines are known for having a great balance of product quality and price. And this seems to be the route that they've gone down for these new products too. Today, they have released a range of new products, but the two new fixtures are the 120D and 120B, both of which are 120 watt Cobb LED fixtures with the D standing for daylight and B standing for bicolor. When it comes to pricing, the 120D and 120B are some of the most affordable fixtures on the market at just over £200 for the daylight version and just under £250 for the bicolor version, which has a CCT range of 27 to 6500 Kelvin, which is a pretty average range for a bicolor fixture. That puts them pretty much at the same price as the Amram 100D and 100X, which really will be the main fixtures that these are compared to. So let's take a look at how they perform. When it comes to output, if we look at the photometrics supplied by Smorig and compare to metrics from a few of this fixture's competition, it does look really impressive. But let's run some of our own tests to see how close these figures are. We ran both these tests with the daylight and bicolor fixtures, as well as the Amram 100D. We unfortunately didn't have a 100X, but we can compare manufacturer specs for that. But I wish we did have one to test alongside the B. The first set of photometrics we can see here is using the included reflector of each fixture. For the B, we tested at both 5600 Kelvin and 3200 Kelvin. Performance is good and brightness is solid, but does fall off quite heavily when at 3200 versus 5600 Kelvin. However, color performance is good for a fixture of this price point. Looking at the 120D, we can see it performs better at 5600 Kelvin than the B, which isn't surprising. It's also roughly 2500 lux brighter at 100% at the same distance. When we compare this to the Amram 100D, we can see a few things. That the Smorg is brighter at its maximum, which isn't surprising given the extra 20 watts, and that the Amram cannot get anywhere near as dim, which is rather odd. We also double checked to make sure the Amram was set to a linear dimming curve, and it was. When looking at the photometrics though, they both look very close, but the Smorig does edge it out slightly when it comes to overall performance. With these two copies of the light anyway, when looking at bare bulb performance, we can see that performance is relatively similar to the reflector, but obviously with different brightness outputs. Some other fixtures on the market have quite an intense hotspot with the reflectors that they ship with, which can be solved by changing the reflector with a wider angle one, but this will reduce the output in the center, the small rig one is no different with a pretty intense hotspot in the center and quite a dramatic fall off in performance towards the corners of the frame. This is also the case with the 100D that we have here too. While we can't see these fixtures being used with high frame rate cameras too much, we could see it being used with cameras that can capture 120 or 240 frames per second. So we thought we'd quickly test these two frame rates with our FX3. These examples are at the lights dimmest and brightest. And as you can see from our tests, you will not run into any flickering at these frame rates. Physically, the two Smorog fixtures are incredibly similar, with the only real big difference between them being the branding of the model number on the side of the unit. The fixtures are built from decently tough feeding plastics, but considering their price point, the build quality not being top end isn't surprising. The lock off handles for positioning the fixtures don't feel incredibly sturdy, but I'm sure it will be fine if the fixtures are used in some kind of studio or content creation setup. We wouldn't be surprised to see something break eventually if you are planning on traveling with these and using them a lot in constantly changing shooting scenarios. They are also incredibly light, which will make carrying them and mounting them in smaller spaces easy, which is great. They also feature the now industry standard for Cobb LED fixtures, Bowen's modifier mount. The mount itself actually feels really sturdy, which is good. With these new lights, Smorig has also released three new modifiers, two parabolic softboxes, 121 inch and 133 inch. With these out of the box, you get a grid, internal and external diffusion, and a bag for it all to go in. I'm actually using their 33 inch to lightest piece to camera with a grid on it, just here off camera. The build quality of these is actually very solid, and they are decently fast to get up and down due to their solid quick release systems. 
The third modifier Smorg will be releasing is a China Ball or Lantern, which provides really nice soft, even omnidirectional light. This is also pretty simple and fast to set up and break down. Pricing across all of these modifiers is great, but if you'd rather pick up some third party modifiers, the Bowens mount will make that easy to do. When it comes to powering the fixture, you have a three pin XLR input on the back here and a power button switch to the right of it. The fixture can be used with the included power supply or used with a V-lock plate if you want to power the light via battery instead of by mains on location. Unlike the Amaran Cobb fixtures we have mentioned, these two fixtures from Smory don't require two 26 volt batteries and the plate the aperture cell, but instead, Smory recommends that with their V-lock plate, you'll be able to power the fixture with 14.4 or 26 volt batteries that have a capacity above 150 watt hours. They haven't actually specified an exact amp draw needed, but if we take the recommended wattage and divide it by the voltage, we get the amps required, which is roughly 10. So we can assume that if you want to use this fixture on 14 volt batteries, they will need at least a 10 amp draw. I've put some recommended batteries that we know can do this in the description below. These fixtures can be controlled either via the onboard controls or wirelessly with Smorig's small GoGo -Go app, which is available on Android or iOS. The controls on the backs of the units are pretty simple and so is the back screen layout. The dials feel okay, but maybe a bit too sensitive at times. We found it quite easy to skip past our desired settings sometimes. Both fixtures also come with nine effects built in, paparazzi, fireworks, lightning, 40 bulb, TV, breath, flash, party, and flame. The small GoGo -Go app is a bit confusing to get started. You'll need to enter your email, then hit the confirm via the button here. You can then type in the confirmation code you get via email, and you're into the app. From here, you can connect your fixture or fixtures if you have multiple. To do this, all you need to do is hold reset down for five seconds on the back of the fixture, head into the app, tap add equipment and select the fixture you want to add. You can control everything you would expect from this kind of app. It's not quite as polished as the Cider Slick app from Aperture, but that's not surprising given how new Smorig is to the lighting market. At the moment, the app will get the job done and hopefully Smorig can continue to polish it so it's a bit more refined. So the big question you are probably wanting to be answered is, should you buy this or the Amaran equivalent? Well, the 120D and B are pretty much the same price as the Amaran 100 equivalents, but they both have different benefits over each other. The Smorig fixtures come with a bag out of the box, the Amarans don't. The Smorig fixtures have slightly better performance overall from our testing. The Smorig lights are slightly brighter at 100% and can get a decent amount of dimmer. The Smorig fixtures are cheap to power, which will make using them on the location much easier than the Amarans. The Smorig can control the inbuilt effects on the back of the fixture, whereas the Amaran's FX modes can only be changed and tweaked via the Sidus Link app. The Amaran fixtures, however, can be controlled with Aperture's awesome Sidus Link app, whereas the Smorigs use a newer, less flexible, immature app. Also, Amaran is attached to Aperture, which means that they have a stellar reputation, whereas Smorig is a new brand in the lighting space. So if you are buying any other Aperture or Amaran lights, we would suggest getting the Amaran fixtures as they will integrate together fantastically when using the Sidus Link app. The Smorig options could in theory have better availability than the Amaran fixtures as well, but for more detailed stock information, please check our website or give us a call. Let us know what you think of the Smorig 120D and B in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.